When thinking about ancient landmasses, paleogeographers around the turn of the 20th century considered lands that were neither raised into mountains nor thrown down into oceans to be what Seuss termed asylums, where plants and animals were protected from the vicissitudes of tectonic forces. It's similar to the Ice Age concept of a refugia, where the glaciers spare a particular area, and once they recede again, anything that survived in that area can then spread out again. So we have taxa which had been widespread across ancient supercontinents, divided by geologic activity. The mainland then sees a turnover, but what we would call basal taxa now persist in regions that are isolated by oceans or deserts or mountains. Dutoit phrased it as primitive or long pedigreed forms. Animals like paleognath birds, blind snakes, or lungfish, which today are almost exclusive to the ancient lands of the Southern Hemisphere. Seuss said that asylums reveal themselves as ancient lands, both by their geology and by the residues of older faunas. He called the Tuatara a remarkable relic of the Permian epoch. I would observe that the way Seuss talks about the asylum concept resembles the flood myths that he started his book with. After a period of disturbance, there's some areas that are spared that can then recolonize the lands around them. They're acting like tectonic arcs. Workers back then were not just interested in disruptions in Earth's history. They also looked at its continuities, and they had an expectation or even a presumption that those continuities would be more prevalent down in Gondwanaland. 